The user interface in Maya 2016 has been overhauled to allow it to work efficiently with high resolution displays. So no matter what your display, Maya will scale the icons based on the device that you have hooked up. We've also taken the time to reorganize the menu structures and group them based on tasks. So we have a menu structure for modeling, one for rigging, animation, FX, and rendering. If we look at the rigging menu structure, you'll see that we have all the things that you would need to rig a character. So your skeleton tools, your skinning tools, all the animation deformers, as well as the constraints, all live underneath the rigging menu structure. We've also changed the icons and have them color-coded based on the types of operations they perform. So all the nerves, curves, and surfaces are one color, the polygon tools are another, and finally the FX tools are yet a third color. We've taken the time to also improve the Hypershade window, and it's now a complete LookDev environment. So I'll walk you through a few of the cool things that the LookDev environment can do inside of Maya 2016. So this is the Hypershade window, and it looks relatively similar to what we had before, except for the fact that we now have a material viewer and a property editor displayed inside of the Hypershade window. Notice that the node editor also has multiple tabs. These tabs are actually saved with your scene and the graphs are remembered exactly the way you've laid them out. So if we click on this sand shader and look in the property editor, you'll notice that we have a view called look dev. And this is just a simplified view of the attributes that we think that you're gonna to wanna to play around with when you're working on a blend shader. At any time, if you wanted to get back to the full list of attributes, you can just click that icon to bring that up. You can also load multiple objects in the tabs in the property view. So if I just click on these different file textures and hold down my shift key, you can see that I've now loaded them all into that property editor and I have very fast single click access to get to them. So this material view is actually pretty cool. It has the ability to specify different types of geometry that you wanna have those shaders assigned to. And you can also specify different types of rendering engines that you're going to use. So for this example, I might wanna go ahead and switch from my hardware view to the mental ray renderer. And when I do that, you'll see that I can switch onto this car paint shader. I get this nice lighting preview of it directly inside of here. We'll switch back to that shader ball so that we have a little bit more surface detail going on. And we can also change the environment in this lives in. These are just image-based lighting probes and you can actually add your own. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just say interior, uh, we'll do exterior color one. We do that, it basically throws that object into a parking lot. And you can see that I get this really nice, fully rendered preview of what that material looks like in a real lighting environment. So it's a fast, easy way to interact with your, with your materials to get them tuned up and dialed into just the way you want them to look. So some other things that you can do that are kind of cool is this really awesome soloing workflow inside of Maya. So what that means is I can basically go ahead and we'll switch back to our hardware view here. I can start to use this soloing workflow to isolate different textures or different materials and get a quick representation of what that guy looks like isolated. So if we do something like take a bump map and click the solo button, what it does inside of both the material view window and inside of the viewport is it just puts a simple white shader on there and it allows you to very quickly see what that object's going to look like um, without any other shading contribution. It's just bump on white. It gives you a really quick read as to what that bump map's going to actually do. So some other things that we can do with this, obviously we can start soloing different pieces of uh, different texture maps. What they'll do is they'll, if it's a texture map, it's going to make it go to a flat plane view inside of the material viewer, and it's going to isolate it in your viewport without any shading contribution. So this is really great when you start to build up things that are slightly more complex. Let's say we wanna take this spec map here, and I wanna overdrive it a bit. So I'm gonna remap this color with an HSV node. So we'll just do a remap on this guy, just do a remap HSV. We'll grab that, pipe this into there, and we're gonna shove this ultimately into that spec color. But as I'm tuning this remap HSV node, I really wanna see the overall effect. So I'll just click the solo button on that. And now as I start to make changes to this, I get a nice view in my material viewer, as well as directly inside of my viewport, what that, what that remap is going, is going to do. And at any given time, I can just turn that back off and we're back to our full shading. So one last thing that I wanna talk about with the Hypershade window is its customizability. It's extremely configurable. You can reconfigure this to work exactly the way you want. So there's lots of different windows that we can actually bring out and start docking around directly inside of the Hypershade window. So let's grab something like the Create menu. So this Create menu now is a floating panel. If I bring it over here and I drop it, you'll see that it's going to dock itself directly next to my Node Editor. We'll grab another one. 
Maybe we'll grab something like the bends. I'm going to grab that bends and I'm going to bring it over and dock it in the same exact place. I'm just going to drop it over here and you'll see that it actually goes and puts it in a tab. So you can either have it dock or become a tab. And these are, again, very customizable. You can put them pretty much anywhere you want. You can also grab things like, I don't know, like the UV texture editor. Grab that guy and let's just shove it over here. So now I have my material view in one window and my UV texture editor in another tab. So hopefully this lets you see the true power that we have in the Hypershade window for doing look dev work. The user interface, again, completely reconfigured, takes advantage of the ability to work on nice high DPI monitors, as well as the refresh of all the icons to make them feel a bit more current, and the reorganization of all the menu structures to make things really efficient. And those are the improvements that were made to Maya 2016 in terms of user interface and look dev workflows. Thanks again for taking the time to check this out. Cheers.